my name is Eleanor Barch and I'm the co-founder of the Willie Street Chamber Players. I would like to welcome you today to our virtual concert titled Beyond the Screen and just thank you for being here. Beyond the Screen is a part of a completely reimagined 2020 season we have somewhat fittingly titled Interlude. Our season does look very different this year than normal but we are still really dedicated to finding ways to bring the music to you. So you can visit our website at williestreetchamberplayers.org for more information on all the activities we're doing right now and also for a link to our newly launched GoFundMe page if you're interested in uh, supporting us. Speaking of support, we would like to thank our sponsors, June and Sandy Lee, a generous gift supported today's performance and uh, allowed us to bring this concert to you free of charge. Directly following the performance, we are excited to be hosting a Q&A meet and greet over Zoom at about 1.15 p.m. So if you haven't already, head over to the website. You can sign up for that and we will automatically send you a Zoom link in your inbox. Um, that will also be linked below, I think. Um, we'll also be available in the live chat feature on YouTube and Facebook for those of you who are on uh, devices and we'll be responding to your comments and questions. So definitely don't be shy if anything makes you curious about today's performance. Okay, housekeeping aside, we have a great program for you today. I will mention here that if you're interested in a uh, virtual program with movement titles, composers, and some linked uh, program notes, that's available on our website too. And I'll also link it below the video in the description and have it in the chat. So the performance you're about to hear was recorded live at the beautiful and historic Gates of Heaven Synagogue in James Madison Park. We loved playing here and I think you'll love the beautiful acoustics that uh, you can hear so well in this recording. So first up, myself and Mark Bridges will be performing the beautiful Sonata for Violin and Cello by Maurice Ravel, which premiered in 1922. We've been exploring many smaller chamber works, including these two fantastic violin and cello duos that are bookending our uh, concert today. But what has always struck me about this particular piece, the Ravel, that we'll start with is, I just love how the piece has this symphonically exciting effect while only using two instruments. Um, it's totally thrilling, but the way he writes it is also so economical and there's just no note that's out of place. And so you get the feeling from listening that this is a work of just true craftsmanship. For a piece with such beautiful simplicity, it is known to be very difficult and virtuosic to perform, which Mark and I became intimately aware of during our preparation and rehearsal process. The piece has four movements, medium tempo, very fast, very slow, and then fast again. I want you to listen to the amazing variants of sound textures created. So we have lots of pizzicatos where we pluck the string, we bounce the bow in what's called a ricochet stroke, and there's also just beautiful lyrical writing as well in this piece. So all of these effects combined make the piece, I think, um, have sort of a choreographed dance effect to it. And yeah, when I say that, I also think about watching this uh, piece on your screen and that you'll actually be able to be uh, up kind of close and personal with the music in a way that you may not be able to uh, be in a concert hall, similar to watching a sporting event, a football game on TV, rather than watching it from the stands. So all of that said, I really hope you enjoy the performance today. Thank you for being here. We wish you all well and hope to see you soon.
Thank you for joining us. The piece you're about to hear is the first movement of Tanya Leone's Four Pieces for Cello. This piece was the first composition written after her father's death, and she dedicated it to him. I performed the second movement of this piece earlier this year as part of our concert through Grace Presents. The score states that the second movement is meant to be a prayer. For those who are able to catch that concert, you will probably recognize similar musical language being used. Large changes of register and frequent use of breath marks and fermati in the score make both movements feel very speech-like. I was very struck by how insistent and how mournful many of these passages were. The opening of the first movement is a little bit aggressive and searching and even frantic sounding at times. The middle of the movement is similar to the prayer of the second movement, but a little bit more sweeping with quicker changes from high to low. And you'll notice kind of a repetitive interval going from very low up high. The end of the piece returns to the initial frenzied kind of material, um, and then it ends almost in a sarcastic way. Um, I've really enjoyed connecting with this piece of music and playing in such a resonant space. Gates of Heaven feels really tailor-made for a solo cello playing, so it's um, always a joy to get to play there. I hope you'll enjoy listening to the first movement of Tanya Leone's uh, Four Pieces for Cello.
Next up on today's program will be two violin duos played by Eleanor and myself. The first of which is a lilting lullaby titled Canción de Cuna del Niño Negro, written in 1937 by Amadeo, Amadeo Roldán y Gardes, who lived from 1900 to 1939. Roldán's parents were from Cuba and he was born in Paris and grew up in Europe. At the age of 21, he moved to Cuba, where he remained for the rest of his life. He played a leading role in bringing new life to concert music in Cuba. In Cuba, he was the conductor and music director of the Havana Philharmonic and founded the Havana String Quartet and taught composition at the conservatory, which was later named in his honor. He his compositions use Afro-Cuban rhythms, and he was the first composer to bring Black Cuban folklore and culture into concert halls. The duo opens with a mournful rocking motive of a tritone, which is one of the most unsettled intervals in classical music. The motive is joined by the other violin playing a tender, transporting melody. The second duo you will hear is the first movement of the Appalachian Duets, Opus 38, number eight, for two violins written by Maria Newman. This movement is titled Heart of the Hills and was written in 2001. Maria Newman is a native of California where she currently resides and has a thriving career in composition and performance. Her compositions range from large scale orchestral works to chamber music of varying instrumentation like this duo and silent film scores. Maria Newman is a part of the musical Hollywood Newman family dynasty. You'll notice this particular duet begins with a very different sounding set of intervals, the perfect fifth and the perfect fourth, which are contrasting uh, to that of the lullaby you heard earlier. This movement feels like a snapshot of dawn breaking. It's easy to imagine a dewy morning with the sun cresting over the hills and the birds busy with their morning activities. Thank you for joining us today for our very first virtual concert. The pandemic has brought a lot of uncertainty to all of our lives. Musicians and artists have been hit hard during the pandemic and we at WSCP are dedicated to finding new and imaginative ways to keep bringing healing music to you. From virtual concerts like this one to our innovative new micro concerts, we are getting creative to keep the music alive and we need your help. You may have noticed our GoFundMe campaign link pop up during the concert. Please consider donating to make more free programs like this possible. One perk from the pandemic is that we are able to share this concert with friends and family all across the country and the world. Uh, we don't know what live performances will look like for the foreseeable future, but we know that art and music are absolutely necessary now more than ever. Your donation will help us make it possible to continue reimagining how live music can exist during this time and beyond. The truth is that the pandemic will most likely influence how we go about planning for next summer when our regularly scheduled season usually takes place. Your support will make it possible to keep moving forward, even with all this uncertainty, and shows us that what we do on stage and behind the scenes is meaningful to you. We hope to see you at the post-concert Zoom reception where all four of us will eagerly be waiting to engage in meaningful conversations with you. Check out the YouTube and Facebook description for how to obtain the Zoom reception link. Thanks for tuning in.
Hi, I'm Lindsay Crabb, one of the cellists with the Willie Street Chamber Players, and Pran and I are going to be playing the Kudai duo for violin and cello, which he wrote in 1914. Kudai was a Hungarian composer, and he was very interested in folk music, much like his contemporary Bela Bartok. And so he actually wrote this piece shortly after a trip that he made to collect folk music. And you can hear quotes of peasant dances and children's songs and a lot of themes that he wrote based on folk music. Uh, Kodai was also very interested in language and linguistics, and you'll hear that a lot in this piece as well. He writes a sort of ongoing conversation between the violin and the cello throughout the piece. Um, sometimes we're agreeing, sometimes we're not agreeing so much. Um, but he seemed very interested in having this uh, dialogue between the two instruments. So you'll hear that emphasized more than, say, the, the lyricism that you would hear in French or Italian music. Uh, the piece is written in three movements. The first movement has sort of a heroic theme and heroic feel to it. So lots of driving rhythms and um, soaring melodies. The second movement is the slow movement. It's more somber. And I've heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard that it's sort of, um, foretells the, the tragedy and the pain and, and everything of the World War I that's about to start. And then the third movement starts with a Fantasia-like solo for the violin, but it quickly bursts into sort of a wild chase that takes us all the way to the end of the piece. We've had a really great time learning this and uh, getting to know the piece, and I, we hope you enjoy it.
Thank mm-hmm. you.